speciation and extinction. A species is defined as a group that is able to interbreed and produce offspring that can also interbreed. So their young must be viable, fertile. Speciation is the formation of a new species. This results in the diversity of all the life forms on Earth. Geography has impacted speciation more so than anything else, and there's really two modes at which this happens. We call it allopatric and sympatric. Allopatric speciation is when there's been a physical barrier that has divided a population or small populations into separate populations from a main population. So these populations are geographically isolated, so there has been a way to prevent gene flow, and this is usually often caused by natural disasters. Sympatric speciation is when a new species evolves. This is what we think of when we think of the word speciation. <clears throat> this has um, happened while uh, still inhabiting the same geographical region, um, and the ancestral species, uh, the ancestral species, um, usually due to the exploitation of a new niche. But an, the ancestral species could still be there. So sometimes a new niche may open up geographically, um, giving way to a new, given way to new resources, allowing for. So let me illustrate this. If allopatric speciation, I have an original population, right? And I have an original population of the sympatric population. So the initial step is that there's some sort of barrier that's been formed or some sort of separation. Um, this barrier that's been formed allopatrically resulted in the evolution of um, reproductive individuals that were isolated. But in isolation, they evolved separately, so much so that they can no longer interbreed with their original population. And so now this new distinct, this new, um, distinct species um, has been intermixed, like the barrier's been removed, and so now there's this new um, equilibrium factor that has happened afterwards. Sympatrically is when we see this uh, polymorphism occurring within a population, so some sort of uh, event has occurred and we now have this separate population forming and it interbreeds with itself, only itself, that within its own ancestral population, we see this equilibrium typing to form. All right, so speciation occurs due to reproductive isolation. Prezygotic barriers are reproductive isolation types along with the postzygotic barriers. Both types maintain an isolation and they prevent gene flow between the populations. Prezygotic barriers prevent mating, and they basically hinder fertilization. It could either be related to habitat or some sort of temporal reason. Perhaps it just occurred as a behavioral isolation. Um, there could be something mechanical, physically isolating it. And it can also have some sort of gametic barrier. These are the ones that we're going to talk about individually so that you kind of understand what um, these barriers are. So habitat isolation occurs when a species in they live in different areas that they occupy different habitats kind of within the same like geographical location. So in in western North America, the mountain bluebird, it lives in high elevation while the eastern bluebird lives in the lower elevation. So they're on the same geographical area, but just due to the elevation there is now this habitat that has isolated the two and you can see from the pictures that they now physically they they look very different. Temporal barriers were species where they, um, they're going to breed at different times of the day or they have different breeding seasons. So the western spotted skunk, it mates in late summer, while the eastern spotted skunk, it mates in the late winter. So even though these species look the same, there's still a barrier in between them that doesn't allow mating to occur. Behavioral isolation occurs when a species, subspecies, can no longer interact due to a mating ritual. Uh, so there's an example, and the photo here is actually not the bird, but the blue-footed booby, they live on the Galapagos Islands, um, and there are ones that live on the islands that will only mate after a specific courtship ritual. 
this ritualistic dance is unique to just the ones on the island um, in the natural ecological world. We call this the blue suede shoe dance affectionately, but, um, but it is pretty uh, specific. There can also be mechanical isolation. Like there's just no physical way that something could happen. Could be reproductive anatomy of one species does not fit the reproductive anatomy of another. So there are snails that can have varying spirals on their shells, which can prevent mating. You also see this a lot in bats where there's lots of species of bats that live in a bat cave. So a lot of them are there, but their genitalia have different shapes. And so there's just no physical way to mate with the incorrect species in there. And then of course, gametic isolation. There are proteins on the surface of some gametes that don't allow for an egg and sperm to, to fuse. This, so a good example would be like the sperm and egg of a red and purple sea urchins. When they're released into the water, they cannot fertilize each other. Even though the sea urchins are very, very closely related and their reproductive pattern is the same, there's still a protein tag, if you will, that's on the surface um, that accounts for that specific sperm from that species to, to fertilize. So now we're just gonna practice. I want you just to read an example and determine which type of barrier is at work here. <clears throat> Many plants have anatomical structures that only allow certain pollinators to collect and distribute pollen. How about example two? Lions and tigers are both common in India, but the lions live in open grasslands while the tigers live in the forest. And the third example, um, female fire, fireflies, they identify males of their own species to mate within their flashing patterns. So the first one would be mechanical, number two would be habitat isolation, and then three would be behavioral isolation. Now the post-zygotic barriers. A post-zygotic barrier prevents um, a hybrid zygote from developing. Um, into some sort of viable fertile offspring. So this can happen three ways. We either reduce hybrid uh, viability, we can reduce hybrid fertility, or there just is a hybrid breakdown. Hybrid viability is reduced because the genes of different parent species may interact in ways that impair the hybrid's development or survival. So a domesticated sheep, it can fertilize domesticated goats, um, but the hybrid embryo usually dies early on and doesn't survive childbirth. Hybrid fertility can, um, it, a hybrid can develop into a healthy adult, but it's sterile. This usually is a result in the different number of chromosomes between parents. The classic example is a male donkey and a female horse. They can mate to produce a mule, but the mules are often sterile. They produce unbalanced gametes that can't fertile either a, another uh, donkey, another horse, or another mule. A hybrid breakdown, um, the hybrid of the first generation, it could potentially be fertile, but when they mate with a parent species or another one of that initial hybrid, um, their offspring will be sterile. Um, this occurs a lot in plants. So the farmers have tried like crossing different types of cotton plants, but after the first generation of all these plants produce, um, they don't get the, the F1 population is viable, but any generation that's after that is sterile or unreproductive or doesn't sprout. So we call that a hybrid breakdown. Micro and macro evolution. Speciation is the bridge between the concepts of micro and macro evolution. Micro evolution, that's change in allele frequency in a single species of a population. Just natural change, sexual selection, genetic drift, etc. Macro evolution, those are large evolutionary patterns that we see. Um, adaptive radiation, mass extinction, and then just stasis. There's like no change over very long periods of time. Evolution and speciation, they can occur at different speeds. We can have punctuated equilibrium. That's when evolution occurs very rapidly after a long period of stasis. And then we can have gradualism. That's when evolution is occurring very slowly over hundreds of thousands or millions of years. 
Divergent evolution is when groups of the same common ancestor, they evolve and they accumulate differences resulting in the formation of a new species. Adaptive radiation is if a new habitat or niche becomes available. Species can diversify very rapidly. And then convergent evolution is when two different species develop similar traits despite having different ancestors, i.e. remember the analogous traits. Extinction happens when there's a termination of a species. Extinctions have occurred throughout Earth's history. There's actually been five mass extinctions of record. Human activity has affected extinction rates drastically. So anytime there's like an ecological stress, there's usually an extinction rate um, that goes up and things happen quickly. So if a species does go extinct, it opens up a new niche that can be exploited by a different species.